I was sick and tired of not facing the fact that I've allowed life to make me feel like a loser. And a lot of us allow life to do that and we accept it. And a lot of us talk about how we believe in God. We believe in something higher than us. If that is truth, you won't allow yourself to feel that way. A lot of people don't understand that. If you really believe, God did not put you on earth to be nothing. A lot of us like to visit a very uncomfortable world, like living with the seal. He visited for 30 days an uncomfortable world. That's my lifestyle. People ask me, so why do you still do this every day? I'm 43 years old. I did 21 years in the military, and now I'm a firefighter. Right. I'm a wildland firefighter. I don't need it. I'm right. good. Why do you still do this? You right now are a leader. You, sit in this chair right, right. now, to thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. That's why you do it. Why you get up at 3, 4, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning is because you are setting the example for others to follow. So people always go, what drives you now? What should drive you now is no more you. Like you said, I'm comfortable. I'm good. It's not about you. You have to change your mindset to God gave you everything you want. It's pay time. You got to now start paying bills for the yeah. people in your mindset. So you're suffering now. Like when people say, why do you get up at six o'clock in the morning? So then you can come in and set the example for everybody else. There's so many times in life, you don't want to be doing what you're doing. You can't just quit. You remember this, it's in the hobby, it's in the joke, it's a lifestyle. So what you say to yourself is important. There's no coach, there's no trainer to keep you going, it's only you. So think about this, you've been working your whole life to get a seat at the table. To see at the table is you want to be the best amongst all the best people in your career field. So you finally get that letter. It's steak, lobster, it's a big dinner. Everybody's showing up, dressed to the nines. Make sure you show up soaking wet for getting after it, working out hard, towel around your neck. You respect the event. So make sure you put that towel over that nice chair. The whole thing is this, don't say a word. Stay uncommon amongst uncommon people. You're never done. Don't stop when you're tired. Stop when you're done. Stay hard. What's funny about failure is we're afraid to fail a lot of times because we're afraid to get those people telling us that we're not good, that we shouldn't try again. This is how I look at it. First of all, those people are going to be there. And 99.9% .9 of those people who are in your ear after you fail haven't even tried what you're attempting to do. That's first of all. But they have a voice. So that voice needs to be, you know, we're done. You don't need to talk to me anymore. Like when I felt the pull-up record, I was going for 4,020 pull-ups. And I felt it twice before I finally got it the third time. I had so many people telling me, you can't do it. And I was like, how many pull-ups have you done in your life? So that's the first thing. Look at who's talking to you negatively first. And failure is the only way to grow. The only way to grow for me. Everything I've ever succeeded in, three hell weeks. You know, everything, ranger school, everything I've ever failed, I failed miserably so many times but what you do with that failure is you go back you learn from it and not just learn from it i call it the live autopsy where you get all this stuff you get a scratch piece of paper and you start writing down don't even acknowledge the fact that you failed you're looking at it almost like the daggone light bulb like okay this went wrong that went wrong that went wrong and then you go back into it all failure is is a tool for success. It shows you how to get there if you're willing to stay in the fight. That's the hard part. So after failure, all these voices start to say, no, we're not good enough, we're not good enough, we're not good enough. No, we haven't tried enough. And that is so true. We just haven't tried enough. But, but yeah, without failure, I wouldn't be who I am today. That voice became haunting. When I was younger, I could get away from it a little bit. When it becomes something that steady just pecks at you all day long, no matter what you're doing, I could be talking to you in this voice at the same time, like, what are you doing? What are you doing, man? You're a loser. Where, where are you going, man? This, this is what you could do your whole life? So it'd be talking to me as I'm talking to everybody. It was almost like I had two people. 
And I'm like, good God, just right. shut up. I sure. want to be comfortable. I want to be left alone. I, I don't want to face all these things right. that, that life gave me. I had to stop caring what people thought about me. I walked around and I put these people on a pedestal. Everybody was better than me. So I can't tell you anything about me because you're going to judge me and I'm going to feel even worse than what I am. What I realized, once I calmed my mind down and sat back and looked at how jacked up this world is, once you realize that you are not alone, everybody that's talking to you about how jacked up you are, only thing they've done better than you is they've hidden their world better than you have. That's all they've done. So once I realized that, for instance, there's all these things that are on TV and we have all these news people judging people who jack up in life. Yeah, they made big mistakes. But that person who was judging you on TV, I guarantee you, that news person, they say, I'm glad that my shit didn't come out, <laughs> but I'm gonna judge the hell out of you. I know that about people. So if you wanna sit back and judge how jacked up I was and how messed up my life was, Merry Christmas, go for it, have a good time. But I'm smiling at you right now, knowing you have a secret that you're not willing to share. It gives you a lot of power when you're able to go on a podcast this big and say, hey, I'll tell you anything you want to know. I no longer care. There's a lot of power in that to be able to put your life on a billboard for the whole world to see and say, judge it, man. Judge it. Like just me talking about it makes me feel good. And that's another thing about it. When you are willing to talk about how jacked up you are, the strength, that big rock that you carry, it just starts to come off you. It just starts to come off. That's why I do it so often. I'm like, hey, man, I'll tell you anything you want to know. I'm tired of being afraid. I'm tired of lying about how good I'm not. There's a lot of them out there, but most of them are that way for one big reason. They can't see themselves doing it. They can't see themselves doing it. It's one big reason. The other reason is a lot of it is jealousy. When you set these humongous goals and they see that you're getting at it, let's say for instance, we have a family. Let's say we're all a big family here. And every morning I'm getting up training for a 200 mile run. And you see me get up at four o'clock in the morning and all you are sleeping. And by the time I get done running my 30, I come home just getting up. How are you gonna feel about yourself? A lot of times when you're an overachiever and you have people, a lot of our family members, a lot of our friends, they're mediocre. There's always those couple of guys who are uncommon, who wanna be better. You got somebody around you, man, who's trying to be better and you don't have the drive that they have, it's a constant reminder of how jacked up you are. You have to know that that's what it is. Anybody in your course not saying, man, get after it, brother, I'm so proud of you, they have a problem with themselves. Because all you're trying to do is achieve more. If that's a problem for somebody, you have to look at them and say, man, you really have a problem with yourself, huh? It's much deeper than what you think. It lies deep in your soul. How I was able to fix myself was I saw how ugly I was towards other people who were great. I was able to look back and say, man, you don't hate that for any reason because he's great. You're lazy. He makes you feel lazy every single day.